morning. I always think it's such a shame that we're all so worn out and tired and eager to get off the trail by the time we reach the most beautiful parts of the trail. But for those who start at Katahdin and work their way south, I just don't see how they make it through Virginia and the rest of those states after doing the most spectacular part physically. I'm guessing it might be a little bit easier, but I don't know because I've never done it. I mean, if you exert all of your energy into going through Maine and the Whites, and then you go through the rest, maybe it's a little easier. I don't know. Really don't know. But I think for me, personally, I need the specter of the big finish to keep me on the trail. I ended up going to the shelter that was the longer distance away and I was really tired. Yesterday was a bit of a better day simply because the humidity was down and it was not quite as hot. The mosquitoes were not quite as bad. They're still here, but much better than they have been. I slept in till about 4.45, and I did not want to climb up out of that shelter in low light, simply because there were some rock scrambles and some really steep places. I wanted to be able to see well what I was going to have to go through. And I've only got a little over four miles to get to Salisbury. As it turns out, they are only able to accommodate me for tonight. If someone cancels, I will be the first in line to get that spot. I really feel like I need to rest. And... There is the rain that is supposed to be coming through. Not that I'm going to melt in the rain, but we're getting into some treacherous trail that is very dangerous to do on slippery rocks. So that is my main concern. You never can count on the weather reports. They change so often. But since I feel like I need the rest anyway, if I could get that room get a bed for a second night then that would be great I think after my stay in that motel my mental and emotional state is much better one thing I never realized on my other hikes is how dirty I'm getting out here every evening I use wet wipes to wipe off my face and my arms and get all of the dirt on my feet and legs that I can see, but you would be amazed at how black that wet wipe is after I wipe my face and my arms. I can see it on my legs, but I guess it's just the dust and dirt from the trail, you know, getting on my face and arms. Anyway, I guess I have rambled about long enough. Very much looking forward to going into town, getting a shower again, clean clothes, getting something to eat. This is an expensive town. Rumor has it that Meryl Streep lives here somewhere. I don't know if that's true or not, but that came from Maria's mouth herself. So if anybody could know... It should be someone who lives there. Anyway, I guess that's it for the morning report. This is Rebound, signing out. It seems that I have lost all power and strength in my muscles for the uphills. I can still walk fast and powerfully if I'm on a flat trail, but going uphill... 
is so hard. It's like I, I just have no more energy in my legs, and I'm wondering if there are any of you out there that have expertise as far as athletes go and endurance sports, what I might need, what I'm doing wrong. I just don't know what else to do. I know this is going to make most of you croak, and it makes me croak. But if I can find them in Salisbury, I'm going to buy some honey buns. If I have to power myself with sugar, if it's just a lack of calories at this point, then I'm going to do it because I want to finish. And I can tell you, we don't eat sugar at home. We eat a very low-carb diet. And... I really don't like the taste of sugar anymore. Things, even out here, are too sweet for me. The Cokes I crave, I'm not sure if it's for the sugar, or if it's for the fizz, or the coldness, or the sodium. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to choke the honey buns down or not. A lot of people eat Snickers out here. And, I don't know, I might try those. I just need something. But at this point, I am thinking it is simply calories. That I'm not getting enough calories. And as I mentioned before, I don't count them. I didn't count them when I made my meals. Each of my meals has about a third cup of dehydrated meat which in theory should be about two-thirds cup rehydrated. And they've got about a half a cup of rice and about a quarter cup of vegetables. And that is basically what my meals consist of. My oatmeal, as you know, has half a cup of oatmeal, quarter cup of nuts, quarter cup of dried fruit, a couple of tablespoons of sugar, some powdered milk, some powdered butter. Sometimes I added hemp seeds in there, and sometimes there are coconut flakes in there. So, lunch is usually a tuna packet. I've also found at Walmart that Starkist has these chicken creations of flavored chicken and I seem to be able to stomach those better than just the plain chicken packets. That uh, chicken, the plain chicken and the packets, I've tried a, several different brands. That chicken is just otherworldly. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's Soylent Green. It's just weird. So, oh, I also sometimes when I can get to a Walmart for lunch, I I buy these combo packets of cheese sticks and meat sticks. And I'll put a cheese stick and a meat stick and a packet of mayonnaise on a tortilla. That's what's for lunch sometimes. <clears throat> and in the past, when it wasn't so hot, I'd buy a block of cheese and just have cheese and a tortilla. So that's that. If anybody has any advice, I welcome it. I'm willing to try anything at this point. Bud is going to send me some of those Gatorade bars in the box after Salisbury as well as some protein powder. And I think he's going to order me some ghee. And I am so tired, people. I am so tired. I just feel exhausted and 
it's worrying me to no end. This morning for breakfast, I had sunrise pudding. And that actually had, my if my memory serves me correctly, a couple of tablespoons of pudding mix, rice, fruit, and that didn't do it for me. I'm really, I've got mostly oatmeal, but I threw in a couple of sweet potato porridge and rice pudding and ri breakfast rice. But I really dread those because it's al almost all of my dinners have rice as the base. So I really welcome the oatmeal for the different texture and flavor. But I do have a few of those that are in the mix. I always save them for last because I don't like them very much. And... I was thinking this morning that there really is not one dehydrated supper that I really look forward to. I think the, I've got one that is like a chicken alfredo. It's got a nice creamy sauce to it and broccoli. And I enjoy that one. My ultimate favorite, believe it or not, is refried beans they rehydrate well if I have some Fritos to go in it or a tortilla to put it on then that really helps those along but really suppers are really hard to get down but I don't think I'd be doing much better with mashed potatoes or ramen I am just I'm ready to be back home I want to enjoy what's left of the trail. I think I could if I felt better, and I think I will if it cools off some, and I know it will when I get to the higher elevations. I just, I'm struggling right now, and I think a lot of it has to do with the heat and my exhaustion. So, I'm not giving up yet. I'm still on the trail. I really, really want to finish. I'm just telling you. I'm being honest with you. It gets hard out here, and it's not just me. I know there are people out there who are maybe outside of the norm, but I'm seeing so many people out here who are describing exactly what I'm telling you. We're all tired. We've lost the power in our legs. We're having trouble making it up the hills. Uh, it's not just me. We're just tired. It's hard to stay on the trail at this point when you've been on trail for... I think I've been on trail for about four months now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess it's somewhere around there. I'm not sure exactly, give or take. So, I guess I'm just rambling. I get really chatty when I'm going into town. I guess because I'm filled with hope. Hope of a rest. Hope of a clean body, clean clothes, a real meal. And just to rest. That, I can't remember if I've said this, I know I told Bud, but that 11.5 I did into the motel the other day felt like a full day. Although I think it did do my body good, even though as far as my exhaustion level, or my legs and feet, and the pain, I think that helped a lot resting that half a day. I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, I think you know what I was getting at. I'm just so tired. And I guess I will stop rambling for now. You might find this interesting. I heard a tree fall in the forest last night. It was dark 
it sounded like a gunshot and then a tremendous crash. It took me a minute to realize what had happened because it woke me up. But I thought that was interesting, you know. That saying, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, did it really fall or something like that? Well, I heard it. Someone heard that tree fall in the forest. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but as we go further north, it is expected that your mileage is going to go down just because the terrain gets more difficult. It slows you down, plus the sunlight hours in the day are getting less and less. I did 18.5 yesterday. The only reason I was able to do that is because there was a lot of flat trail and quite a bit of road walking and when you're going straight and flat it's easy to walk faster and I don't remember exactly where they expect your mileage to go down I know definitely through the whites it goes down to like 10 or 12 miles a day and I think I calculated doing fewer miles before that I'm not sure anyway I just wanted to mention that because I've actually been doing more miles in the past month through Pennsylvania than I really expected to do it just happened or was forced due to shelter spacing not being able to stealth camp or water so I just wanted to prepare you all for that don't be alarmed if my mileage starts going down it's expected to go down the further north you go